Before they had ever played together, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant spent several days at Jimmy's houseboat alongside the River Thames, talking about music. They musically fell in love with each other, and you can hear it in the music, can't you? Both musicians shared a passion for American blues and classic rock and rollers like Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis. But they were amazed to find that they also shared a love of folk-based acoustic artists like Joni Mitchell, Joan Baez, and Bert Yance. Robert and Jimmy had uh, the English folk background also coming in. Uh, there, there was a softer side. While Plant and Page borrowed from their musical heroes and at times performed other artists' songs, Led Zeppelin's music was purely their own creation. They really were not copying them. I, I, I think of that of them as having swallowed the pill. Once they swallowed the pill, they could just sit down and play naturally and improvise as though it were their own music. One of the band's trademarks was a skill for improvisation that could take the song and the band into uncharted territory. They would take all these inroads and outroads through sections of a song and sort of come out together at the same time. It's impossible for an observer to actually understand how they achieved it. Led Zeppelin's audiences were entranced with their versatility. They would just weave this intensely um, slow motion effect and then they'd rock out and everybody like ah! and then they'd sit down and play acoustic with mandolins and stuff like that um, they were defying gravity really it's magic yeah but for all of their diversity nothing left a deeper imprint than the road weary big hearted American blues they had this label that said heavy rock, you know, or heavy metal as it was then. <clears throat> and, you know, I thought, well, I'll go and have a taste of this and see what it's like. Uh, and immediately realized that it's completely based in the blues. The exotic sounds and rhythms that flavored Zeppelin's music took audiences beyond the scope of their own lives, often beyond their own consciousness. I think anyone who ever went to a, a Led Zeppelin concert is aware that it was a, a group trance that occurred there. For some, the first taste of Zeppelin was actually overwhelming. And they started doing the Lemon Song, and all around us, we saw girls and women just going into this frenzy, and our eyes got kind of big, and we were like, what, what's, what's that lemon thing all about? <laughs> you know, it kind of freaked us out, and we ended up leaving. Zeppelin's music wasn't the only thing affecting their audience's consciousness, especially in the United States. And it was the whole thing coming out of the 60s into the early 70s, you know, it was free love, man. Let's get high. Then she led Zeppelin. Great. The early days were mind-blowing for the band as well. Plant and Bonham were barely 20 and fresh from small towns in the Midlands. Suddenly, there were no limits. The Continental Hyatt House Hotel in Los Angeles, where Zeppelin set up U.S. headquarters, became known as the Riot House. The band invited their hosts to enjoy themselves as well. There'd been some slight damage to one of the rooms, you know, accidental damage. And Peter Grant said to the manager of the hotel, Oh, I bet you hate it when we come here. And he said, well, no, actually, Mr. Grant, uh, we have much more trouble when the Mormon convention comes to town. And Peter Grant just couldn't stop laughing. And he said, here's a thousand dollars. Have a room on us. And made him go up to a room and made the manager throw the TV out the window. And the manager of the hotel was going, I've always wanted to do this. And the fun wasn't just confined to hotel rooms. There was a friend of the band called B.P. Fallon. We rounded up a couple of sheep, and while he was asleep in bed, we ushered them into his room and lit a flare and threw it in there, and he woke up with his sheep freaking out around his bed. <laughs> um, you know, schoolboy stuff. Fantastic fun. With Spin being a Led Zeppelin specialty, 
Fans will never know how much was true. But of course, the bigger the rumors, the greater the publicity. Whatever took place on the road, all of the band members maintained that they were devoted family men, and all did have children at home. Of course, these wives and children almost never joined the tour. Going home is like going to sanctuary, and going on the road is like going to sanctuary. Sanctuary was essential. In 1971, a music festival in Milan became a riot when 12,000 fans locked horns with police. The band was driven off stage by flying bottles and tear gas. Eventually, Zeppelin's extreme lifestyle took an extreme toll. But from their dancing days in the early 70s till their crash landing in 1980, Zeppelin was unstoppable, especially in America. The whole American culture with, with Woodstock and everything was that it, it was okay to go and let your hair down at a concert, you know. And that certainly happened at all Led Zeppelin's concerts. Hair was let way down. Critics, however, were unimpressed. When Led Zeppelin was actually performing and making records and so forth, serious, the serious critics did not really like them. After Led Zeppelin's first hour-long show in Denver, Colorado on December 26, 1968, Robert Plant's singing was described as having no special appeal. Bonham's drumming was uninventive and unclimactic. Three days later, in Boston, the crowd demanded seven encores. Still, the negative reviews continued. In 1969, Rolling Stone magazine judged Zeppelin's efforts self-indulgent and restricted. Not only did fans send protest letters, they bought concert tickets and records. In 1975, Led Zeppelin was the first band in history to have six albums on the record charts at once. It took this for the press in England to grudgingly acknowledge their achievement. It's only afterward that people began to realize how important they were in the history of rock and roll. Throughout their career, Led Zeppelin and their music floated miles above their critical reputation, never stopping to look back for guidance or judgment. It was their music, they played it the way they chose to, to be, and if the audience reacted favorably, what more can you ask for? Today, Zeppelin's legendary faith in themselves and their music seems more than justified. When their five and a half hour long career retrospective was released, Led Zeppelin hit number one again, though they hadn't played together as a band in 23 years. <laughs>